In recent years, we've seen no shortage of so-called heaven tourism stories. Some people have written books that have become bestsellers about heaven. Others have recanted their testimonies. So who and what should we believe? That's exactly what Lee Strobel wanted to find out. As a young investigative reporter for the Chicago Tribune, whose wife had found Jesus, Lee Strobel made it his mission to disprove or prove his existence. Lee's journey to faith became a popular movie in 2017. After a brush with death 10 years ago, Lee added another book to his popular The Case 4 series, this time examining the afterlife. The Case for Heaven is Lee's answer to what he says is life's most important question. Then what happens to us after we close our eyes in this world for the last time? And that's the million dollar question. Joining us now via Skype is Lee Strobel. Lee, welcome back to the show. Well, thank you so much. Great to be with you. Well, Lee, 10 years ago, you had a close call. Doctors said you were two steps away from death. What happened? Tell us. Yeah, my wife found me unconscious, called an ambulance. I woke up in the emergency room. The doctor said, you're one step away from a coma, two steps away from dying. And then I fell back unconscious. Uh, I had a rare condition called hyponatremia, which is a precipitous drop in my blood sodium level. And I lost a kidney in the process, and I hovered between life and death for, for quite a while there. And um, as difficult as that experience was, it was a very clarifying experience and really motivated me to want to make sure what really does happen after we close our eyes for the last time in this world. You didn't see, you didn't go to heaven, though, when that happened to you. No, I didn't have what's technically known as a near-death experience, but uh, I had a brush with that. But, you know, I was a skeptic about near-death experiences. I thought that they were kind of a new agey sort of thing. They were not well documented. And yet, in my investigation, I found there are over 900 scholarly articles in scientific and medical journals investigating near-death experiences over the last 40 years. And um, what shocked me about that is we have corroboration of many of these experiences, which I talk about in my book. In other words, people whose soul separated from their body at the time of clinical death, and they saw things or heard things that they otherwise could not have seen or heard. And this corroborates the fact that indeed, they did have an out-of-body experience, and it means that our spirit, our soul, our consciousness can actually survive physical death. Lee, but can't science sort of explain what people go through when they're dying? I mean, they have these endorphins are released as you're dying and it makes you smile. Uh, can science, uh, you know, can prove anything? That's a great question. That's what I thought. I thought, okay, this was just oxygen deprivation or the, the dying gasps of a brain or hallucinations. But uh, uh, an article in The Lancet, which is the prestigious British medical journal, said that there are no alternative explanations to near-death experiences that stand up to scrutiny when they're thoroughly investigated. None of them can explain this away, um, especially the corroboration. For instance, in the case of Maria, who died during surgery, uh, her spirit floated out of her body. She watched the resuscitation efforts. Her spirit actually floated through the hospital and out of the hospital. And then when she, her spirit was reunited with her body, um, she said, by the way, there's a tennis shoe on the roof of the hospital on the third story landing. And it's a men's blue tennis shoe, left footed. And there's a little wear mark over the toe and the shoelace is tucked under the heel. And they went up and investigated. Sure enough, there it was. Okay, um, that makes that that makes me a believer for sure. I am, yeah. Well, you you interviewed a professor named Scott McKnight, and he says heaven isn't just some uh, beautiful place in the clouds. So, what does he believe? Yeah, I mean, uh, what the Bible teaches and what a lot of people, you know, mistakenly believe is that the that heaven is a very ethereal experience. We're up in the clouds. We're just spirits, not physical bodies. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches there will be a new heaven and a new earth that God will renew his creation. So it's going to be a very physical place. Uh, the book of Revelation does not say that God is going to make new things. It says he's going to make all things new. And so it, our, our world will be a physical world 
world. It will be theocentric, that is, centered around worship of God, but also there'll be relationships, there'll be activities, we'll do things, we'll, we'll have uh, responsibilities, um, we'll explore, we'll have adventures and so forth. So, you know, God is infinite, so we'll have an infinite amount of time to, explain, to explore God. And you say that the Christian worldview of the afterlife offers the best possible outcome and the best hope for all of us. Why is that? Yeah, even the atheist Luke Ferry uh, admits that um, of all religions, Christianity's view of the afterlife is the most appealing if you're a believer, because um, it is a world of joy and adventure and fulfillment, uh, no tears, no suffering in the presence of God himself for eternity. Uh, there's relationships uh, that are renewed and new relationships that are made. So it's really, if it's true, it's a incredible promise. And I believe, as my book demonstrates for many reasons, it is true. Um, and, and especially when you look at the resurrection of Jesus, which I believe is one of the best attested events of the ancient world, uh, we have good evidence that he's an eyewitness to the afterlife. Uh, not only that, but he showed that he's the son of God. And so he created the afterlife. And what does he describe it as? Like a home, that this is not our home, but that is going to be a home for eternity. Well, your new book is called The Case for Heaven. And by the way, I thought the movie about your life, The Case for Christ, was phenomenal. And I've been telling everybody they ought to see it. Uh, so maybe this will become a movie, eh? It will. It'll be in movie theaters next March. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Breaking news. Breaking yeah. news right here. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, great. Well, The Case for Heaven is available in stores nationwide. Lee Strobel, God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us. My pleasure. Blessings to you. It's a book everybody should get. That's, yes. that's fantastic. He, he's a phenomenal investigative reporter. Yeah. And again, the, the well, movie. You know, the yeah. Apostle Paul said that uh, the one thing, I want to uh, attain the resurrection of the dead. That, that's the most important thing. I'm looking forward to it. And it's going to be great. Well, anyhow, Lee Strobel, what a terrific uh, guy.